Hi, my name is Katie Copens, and I'm the author of the chapter book series called The Acadia Files. There are four books in the series. The first one is set in the summer. It's called The Acadia Files Summer Science. The second one is Autumn Science. The third is Winter Science. And the fourth is Spring Science. And I'm going to read you a chapter from this book, and we're going to do an activity from it. But first, I want to give you a sense of who the characters are in the book. Acadia is the main character. She's a fifth grader. And Isabel is her best friend who's in this chapter. And Joshua is her neighbor who is also in this chapter. I hope you enjoy hearing it and do an activity from the book. Chapter 2. Signs of the Season One early spring day, the air is so refreshingly warm that it draws everyone outside. Acadia chooses a sweatshirt instead of her puffy winter jacket, and Isabel puts on her tall green mud boots as they prepare for a walk around the neighborhood. Baxter shows his eagerness by running around in circles by the back door. Acadia and Isabel wave to Joshua, who is dribbling a basketball up and down his driveway. He's wearing shorts and a t-shirt and seems unfazed by the patches of snow still scattered over the ground. Where are you going? Joshua asks as he dribbles toward them. We're taking Baxter for a walk, Acadia answers. Want to come? Sure. No flip-flops to go with your shorts, Isabel jokes. Joshua smiles. I can't help it. It's finally warm out. As they walk, Baxter investigates every puddle and his yellow paws quickly become covered in brown mud. He pulls Acadia toward a neighbor's yard in which tufts of brownish green grass have emerged between small piles of melting snow. Among the dull colors, Acadia notices a patch of purple flowers growing low to the ground. Look, the crocuses are out, Acadia says, leading the group toward the flowers. I don't get it. It's still kind of cold. How can flowers survive, Joshua asks. How do you survive in shorts, Isabel jokes. I'm tough. They're tough too, Acadia says. They're one of the first signs of spring. How do they know it's time to come up, Joshua asks. Flowers don't have brains. Acadia reaches down and touches one of the silky petals. In the spring, the northern half of Earth angles more toward the sun, so we have more daylight. I'm guessing the extra sunlight and warmth give them a signal to grow. So the sun triggers them, Joshua asks. Yep, nature is so cool. Right now, everything that has been in a sleepy state is waking up. In their own way, trees wake up in the spring too, Isabel adds. My sister is allergic to pollen, and soon she'll be sneezing like crazy. It's so weird to think of trees waking up, Joshua says. Frogs are waking up too. I think I heard spring peepers last night, Acadia says. Is that what that chirping was? I thought someone's car alarm was going off. It was so annoying. Why are they so noisy at night? Acadia smiles. Do you really want to know? Isabel and Joshua both nod. Well, animals reproduce in the spring, and to do that, they need to find mates. So, ew, Isabel says. You mean all those loud chirps are frogs looking for mates? Acadia giggles. Yep, you can hear their call for up to a half a mile away. The call helps frogs find one another. I had to learn about frogs for the letter I wrote to the town council last fall. That letter was amazing. Now we have trash cans by Rear's Pond, Isabel says. Acadia smiles with pride. Yep, it was one of the most important letters I've ever written. In a few weeks, we can walk out by the pond and look for frog eggs in vernal pools. What are vernal pools? Joshua asks. They're temporary pools of water that form in the fall and spring when there is a lot of rain but dry out over the summer. They have no fish because they're only there for part of the year. That's why frogs like to lay their eggs there. Without fish, their eggs and tadpoles are safer from predators. Thank you, Acadia, said Joshua. That was very riveting. Acadia groans and shakes her head. Joshua, like her dad, seems to have an unending supply of corny puns for any situation. Wait a minute, says Isabel. You said animals reproduce in the spring. Do trees reproduce too? That's why all that pollen will be in the air soon. That's part of how plants reproduce, Acadia says. I never really put it together my, that my sister is sneezing because she's breathing in pollen from plant reproduction. This has been a very informative and kind of gross walk, says Isabel. On their way back to the house, the group searches for other signs of spring. Acadia points out where tiny buds will soon be growing on trees. There's your dad, Acadia. Let's go tell him what we saw, Joshua says. Joshua tells him what he learned about crocuses and frogs and how riveting it was. You forgot one other way we know when it's spring, Acadia's dad says with a mischievous smile. When the red sarks start playing, Acadia asks. Very true, Acadia's dad says, but there's another way, too. Give up? It's when trees look relieved. Wow, dad, Acadia mumbles. That's corny even for you. 
You really went on a limb on that one, Joshua says, nudging Acadia's dad's arm. Acadia leans toward Isabel and whispers, let's sneak away while we can. Once they start, it keeps going and going. The two girls skip off down the driveway. You know what my favorite sign of spring is? Isabel asks. Please tell me you're not going to make a pun. Well, my goal was to talk about soccer. Really, Isabel? You too? Acadia shakes her head. That's all right. You're a keeper. Acadia grabs a soccer ball from the garage and kicks it to her friend. Isabel kicks the ball back and says, I think we found another sign of spring when even you, Acadia, start making puns. Over the next few weeks, Acadia walks around her neighborhood, taking photos to document how nature makes the transition from winter to spring. Her biggest frustration is that she can't capture all the sounds and scents of spring with her camera. So she decides to make a collage of photographs and drawings, and she finds one or two photos like the spring peeper online. As time passes, Acadia saves space in her notebook to create a collage that includes all three months of spring, from the final snow to the flowers in full bloom. So we're gonna look at this. So what spring looks like, so you can see the phases of it, the first signs of spring, We've got a picture of the spring peeper. It says this little fellow is about an inch long or 25 millimeters. Crocus is in bloom. A honeybee flying to the crocuses, which is pollinator. Just when we thought the snow was gone, we woke up to some. Mom starting to plan out the garden. We've got buds and leaves and daffodils. Birds are chirping, especially outside the window. Dandelions as time passes, and you can see more bees on those. Spring raindrops showing the pollen on mom's car. We've got leaves starting to come in. This is Isabel's sister who's sneezing from all of the pollen. The smell of lilacs in the evening air. Then eventually, um, iris is growing in. Iris is my dad's favorite flower. Then everywhere you look, you see green. And then lots of lots of colorful flowers coming in. The vocabulary for this chapter includes germination, the sprouting of a plant seedling from a seed, hatching, a fully formed baby animal breaking from an egg after incubation, animals that hatch from eggs includes birds, most fish and insects, many amphibians and reptiles and even a couple of mammals, the duck-billed platypus and the echidna, life cycle, the changes an organism goes through from the start of its life until its death, and pollen. Small grains reproduced by flowers for plant, so, sorry, small grains produced by flowers for plant reproduction. Each grain of pollen carries the plant's male genes and is transferred from the flower that produces it to other flowers by wind, insects, or other animals. When we just saw those bees in the picture, um, they are part of that transfer of pollen. When pollen lands on the female section of a flower of the same species it pollinates or fertilizes the flower, which then produces seeds and turns into a fruit surrounding the seeds. Seeds are baby plants. They are usually encased in a hard shell and able to survive for many years until they find a place to germinate and grow. And then every chapter ends with things Acadia still wonders. I keep seeing bees near flowers. I found out that as bees eat flowers nectar, they help the plant because pollen sticks to them. As bees travel from flower to flower, they carry, carry pollen with them, which leads to pollination of the plants. Honeybee populations are declining, and one species of bumblebee, the rusty-patched bumblebee, has declined so much since the 1990s that it was listed as an endangered species in the U.S. in 2017. Why are bee populations dwindling, and how can we help them? And the last one, what would happen to plants without bees to pollinate them? Now I'm going to show you with my daughter, we've started to collect evidence of spring and she's making um, her own notebook to document those changes. This is something that you could do at home as well. So next I'll show you up the start of her nature journal where she's recording what she's seeing with drawings. All right, thank you. The bugs! Puff See, they're jumping off. See them all? There's some over here too. Yeah, I don't know what those are. Purple crocuses are growing in. The buds are starting to come in. The crocus.
focuses are up. They're purple. Then all of these observations came together in making a notebook showing the different signs of spring. So first, the snow was melting and turning into puddles for puddle jumping. Exploring in the woods, we found some bugs on the underside of a log. Could hear the birds singing. The earliest flower that we saw are called snowdrops, which started to come up. The first signs of crocuses buds on the trees, and then when the crocuses came in bloom. And there's room in here for more for the observations of spring to continue. I hope you enjoy doing this at home and have fun looking for signs of spring.